Hello, my friends. Profix 5.1.0 has just been released. And as you can see in the change log on the website, it comes with some new features, some minor user interface improvements, and a lot of bug fixes. And in this video, I just want to go briefly through the list of new features and demonstrate how they work. In previous videos, I demonstrated how to update from the previous version of Profix. We go to all settings in Windows, and then to the Apps. Here we can search for Profex, and then we can click Modify to open the installer of Profex and update the components. But this time I also want to show a different route for updating on Windows. We go to the Profex Program folder on C, Program Files, Profex 5. And here we find the maintenance tool.exe. And if we run this, we open exactly the same updater or installer. So here we can click update components. Then it will offer us version 5.1.0 for some modules. And we just click update. When it's done, we click Finish. And now if we open Profex, we have version 5.1.0. And since every new version of Profex comes with more structure files included, I usually recommend to index the structure files after upgrading to a new version. We can do this from Tools, Index, Reference Structures. And this will index any new structure that was installed with the update to 5.1. That's it. Now we can go to the first new feature. It's context help in various modules. And we've had this context help module in the Windows menu for a while. It displays some uh, help text to the variables in our control files. And what is new is that in some modules, for example, in the search match module, if we open this, we now have this button with a question mark that says show the context help for this module. And if we click it, we get a help text for this entire module usually a short description of what the module does and what it's used for and uh, some help to get started. And we have this for the search match module and for example also for the peak fitting module for generic curve fits. We also have this question mark button and we get a similar text for the generic peak fitting module. The next new feature is multi-range curve fitting. And this also refers to this peak fitting module, window peak fitting, the generic curve fits. And what we can do now is we can define several ranges to fit. So let me demonstrate what that means. To, for example, fit this pair of peaks here at around 13 to 14 degrees, we have to define the range we want to, to fit the curves. We double click at the beginning and double click at the end of the range. And then we can add functions, for example, a linear function to fit the background. And then we add peak functions, for example, pseudo forked, one here, and one here. Now we could fit these functions to the measured data. But now in, this, in the new version of Profex, we can define another range. So we click the Add new fit range button again. Now let's say we want to fit this group of peaks here. So we define the range here. And then we start again by adding a linear function. We have to select the range 2 to append it here. So we add a linear one. And then a few peak functions again. Okay. 
And now if we click the fit button here, it will fit these two ranges to, to the measured data. The next new feature is export of electron density map raw data. We can open the electron density map dialog from the tools menu and calculate the map. And what is new in this dialog is in the file menu, we can now export the map data. So the, the actual raw electron densities calculated before drawing the picture here. And we can export these values, either the entire 3D volume or just the currently displayed layer as a 2D data set. And we can select if we want to export fractional coordinates or Cartesian coordinates. And there's fairly extensive help text in the tool tips. So if you want to know which choice is the one for you, just read these tool tips. And we click OK and we can export either a text file with comma separated values or a GNU plot script so we can run it and do something directly with GNU plot. The next feature is a new selection box to specify the reference structure repository. And this is probably the most prominent new feature. It's this box up here, the structure repository box just next to the reference structure box. And since Profex includes more and more structure files in the structure repositories, it's getting harder to manage these files. And for example, if I want to identify this face and I double click somewhere here, it searches among all the structure files included with Profex. And I often get a lot of nonsense suggestions. And what I can do now is I can limit the search to certain directories. The structure files are organized in directories. We can have a look at this in the locations menu. So we have alumina, titania, zirconia, yttria, BGMN, and so on, and phosphate, minerals. And I can now just limit my search to a certain directory. For example, this is a calcium phosphate sample, so I can select my phosphates. And if I double click now, it will only search among the phases in this directory. Also, this list is now filtered. I only have phosphates here now. To go back to all phases, I just select the empty entry at the top of this list. Now I have all, all the included structure files available again. Then the next new feature is an option to open structure files after adding new phases. And this is a feature that has to be enabled first. It's used, it's by default deactivated in the preferences, BGMN backend configuration, activating this, open new the added structure files. And now if we add a new phase, something for example, rutile, it will open this structure file in a text editor. So we can immediately check if the refinement strategy is what we want or maybe we already know, even before running the refinement, we know that we want to disable texture and maybe enable a microstrain refinement. So it's just a, a slightly improved workflow if you want to edit your structure files after adding them anyway. The next new feature is improved CIF import to work with SPF Spring Materials ISP files. There is nothing to show here. It's just an improvement of the CIF import filter. So it works with CIF files from this source directly. The next three features open structure file of active scan from graph using control T and the next two are very similar. If we select a scan from the plot options list, let's say beta TCP. Now we can press control T on the keyboard Control T will open the beta TCP structure file. Same with hydroxyapatite. If we go to the scan hydroxyapatite, Control T will open this structure file. And the next feature, open structure file on the cursor in the SAF or list file is exactly the same. If we are in the SAF file, 
we place our cursor on one of these structure entries. We click Ctrl T, we'll open this file. And also in the list file, if we are in a block of beta TCP, for example, of the refinement results, anywhere here, we click Ctrl T, we'll open this file. And then we have jump to the phase in the list file when selecting a graph in the plot options list. So again, we are in our list file. And if we select a scan or a phase here, the cursor will jump to this results block for, for this specific phase. So this helps a lot to navigate in the list file, especially in complex refinements. Here we only have two phases, beta TCP and hydroxyapatite. But if you have like 10 or more phases, it's very convenient if you can just select the one you want to check the results uh, by selecting it in the plot options list. Then the last new feature is show scan name as a tooltip when hovering the mouse over a scan. So if we are in the plot and we zoom in a little bit and we want to know which scan or which phase is this here. It says beta TCP, this blue one is hydroxyapatite, or here we have the observed. And the difference curve. And it's not mentioned in the change log, but we can also select scans directly from the graph. If we hold the shift key on the keyboard and click on a scan, we can select it. It's the same as selecting it here in the plot options list, just we can do it right here in, in the graph. And again, if shift, click again, deselects, or if we click on another one, we can select more than one. And if we hold shift and click into the white area, far away from any scan, we deselect all the scans. It also works if we select multiple scans here. We can hold shift and click into the white area to deselect the scans. So that's all the new features listed here. Also check out the minor user interface improvement. It's just minor improvements that will result in hopefully a smoother workflow. And of course, the bug fixes are important. Some crashes and some import problems with different file formats were fixed. So I hope you enjoyed the new version of Profex. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.